Worldwide, processes that led to the emergence of civilizations have occurred several times in Africa. Among the civilizations in Africa, the most prominent is the civilization of Egypt. While Egypt's civilization was likely influenced by its contact with Mesopotamia, the roots of Egyptian civilization emerged through independent developments among the people in southern Egypt who settled in the Nile Valley from the west and south. The Greek historian Herodotus mentioned the Kushite civilization in Nubia, which briefly conquered Egypt in the first millennium BCE and developed its own phonetic writing system. The Romans were aware of the Axum civilization in Ethiopia, which embraced Christianity early on, had contact with Arabia, and, in the early years of Islam, was a destination for some of Muhammad's early followers escaping to Mecca. The Axum civilization also developed its own alphabet. Traders from India, the Islamic empires, and China were in contact with all the cities along the east coast of Africa south of Mozambique. In the Congo Kingdom, from present-day Uganda to northern Angola, and along a wide belt in Central Africa and the forested areas of the West African coast, other civilizations also emerged. The first Portuguese visitors to the city of Benin were impressed by it. The emergence of African civilizations is almost similar to the reasons for the emergence of civilizations in Eurasia and the Americas. In certain regions, people developed ways of cultivating the land that would generate sufficient surplus product, leading to conflicts between major lineages and others in ancient communal structures. Later, some of these major lineages began to rise as ruling classes exploiting the rest of society giving rise to specialized artisan and merchant groups alongside farmers and shepherds within the population. Egyptian civilization has clearly influenced Nubia. The civilization of southern Arabia influenced Ethiopia, and Indian and Arab traders influenced the east coast of Africa. The methods of sustaining the lives of different peoples in Africa underwent significant changes independently of external influences. African peoples developed unique agricultural practices. The same applies later to iron production. Blacksmiths in West Africa learned to smelt iron around 1000 BCE when iron mining was learned in Eurasia. However, their techniques were somewhat different. Agriculture and iron together became factors that changed sub-Saharan Africa. The West African Bantu-speaking peoples, who were the first to implement these methods, increased in number over centuries and, between 2000 BCE and 500 CE, gained the power to displace many of the initially predominant hunter-gatherers in Central and Southern Africa. People with significant agricultural income and a good position in trade generally began to transition to class distinctions, an urban life after 500 CE. Trade connected the towns on the east coast with other civilizations in the Indian Ocean. West African towns became part of a trade network extending to the Nile and Egypt on one side, and to the Maghreb across the Sahara on the other. These contacts led them to adopt Islam, which was more suitable for urban life than their ancient pagan beliefs, rather than developing their own writing system. These developments successively gave rise to the civilizations of Egypt, Nubia, and Ethiopia. By the 15th century, there were other civilizations beyond the immediate borders, from one coast to another. Before the arrival of Europeans, African civilizations were already connected to the world trade system through Islam. Africa spans from north to south, encompassing different climatic zones. Crops grown in North African regions may not thrive in the savanna regions. Conversely, products from the savanna are of no use in the tropical areas towards the equator. Therefore, local improvements in agricultural techniques rarely extended beyond local significance, until revolutionary new transportation methods allowed them to overcome climate barriers. Moreover, there was a significant natural obstacle in the Central African region, namely the Tetsi fly, which prevented the eastward spread of cattle farming. Agricultural communities with domesticated cattle faced great difficulty reaching the ideal lands for cattle in South Africa.
Transportation across the deep seas was impossible on the west coast until the 15th century, because the ship technology capable of dealing with existing winds was not available anywhere in the world. It was relatively easy to reach the east coast, but traveling into the high inland areas was not easy for people. The Sahara divided the continent into two, from the Atlantic to the Nile, and remained an obstacle even after the use of domesticated camels around 500 CE.